you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about kind of what happens this time of year had we not had this whole political deal, which I'm assuming does not in, not uh, affect the inspection business very much. Well, if sales go down, but sales haven't gone down, sales just kind of keep plugging along, and we we are busy. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward for a, a good, strong winter. Mm-hmm. And so when you start to, I mean, are people talking about it? I mean, you're in their homes. No. Do people talk about, you know, like tax credits for windows or different heaters. Do you hear that type of stuff? As I mean, I imagine there there's some connection. You know, I mean, we used to hear those things all the time. But uh, I don't know, the last few months we haven't heard anything in terms of politics. Everybody just kind of laughs about it. It's just like, you know, it's just ridiculous. Come on, guys, let's get it handled. And- figure, figure something out. Yeah, it would be amazing. Well, speaking of, uh, you know, the windows and the heaters and all those different things, and a lot of people right now in their homes are possibly seeing, as you mentioned, some fog through their windows. I mean, there's a lot of different parts of your home that change this time of year. Right, that's true. Uh, when people are going to sell their home, they actually should just kind of walk around their house. And uh, I notice oftentimes when houses are for sale, and I think it's a great idea, people take their window screens off. But then in, sometimes they take their window screens off, but they don't bother to replace the glass that has lost its thermal seal. And uh, the windows are fogging up in between. And it's not an issue in terms of uh, leaking into the house in any way, shape, or form. But it is definitely an issue uh, in terms of the visibility and the cosmetics of the home. And so what, what do you mean by that the, when you talk about the... I mean, everybody knows what a cloudy window is. But what really happens? Well, there's actually a, a silicone gel around the edges on the inside between the glass. And that gel... St- Uh, actually combines with moisture to seal it, but sometimes it starts to lose that that ability to seal things off. And so what happens is the argon gases, they do use Krypton too, uh, but Superman has kind of gotten that out of the way. (laughs) Sure. Um, Argon's a little cheaper and and a little more cost effective uh, in terms of that. Sounds like Monsanto has something to do with our windows all of a sudden. Exactly. So the argon gas comes out and then the moisture starts to come in. And just over time, it gets worse and worse and worse. Now, if you catch it in the beginning phases... Um, you, and really the best thing to do right off the shoot is to call your manufacturer if you can figure out who the manufacturer is of the windows. If you're the original owner of the home, um, if you bought the windows and installed them, oftentimes the manufacturer has a lifetime warranty as long as you are in the home. So if you're putting your house up for sale and you're the original owner, you want to take care of it and not leave it to the buyer because the buyer will have to pay for them. It's interesting. So do most people have a lot of these warranties that they really don't even remember or know about? Probably, yeah. you know. I mean, I mean you must I, see it. Yeah, until I got in the inspection business years ago, um, I had no idea windows had warranties on the glass. Yeah. Um, so they can either replace the glass panels. They typically run about 250 uh, to 300 in terms of an average size window. But if you catch it in the beginning, um, you can actually have a company come out, and what they will do is they will drill a hole up in the top of the window and a very small hole at the bottom of the window, and they'll basically flood the window and uh, it, with some material, and it'll make it dry out, and then they'll seal the glass so you don't have to remove it. Now, if you've got wood windows, if you've got windows with grids, and those kinds of things, that's a t- much cheaper way to go. If it's, uh, if it's just plain glass, pretty windows easy panels. Windows with grids, do you mean like <laughs> with the, the metal in them, like at elementary schools? <laughs> Uh, have no, those like in their the, n- the nice wood grids or the vinyl grids. Oh, okay. Or I'm, I'm something thinking, to... you know, like elementary schools, they have like, you know, the, cr- the crossed over checkerboard of metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I, maybe they don't it's even been, have those it's anymore. Been, it's been too long since I've I know. Been well, you know, now I'm up started. there with our kids and all this stuff. <laughs> uh, so I, I, have a, I have another question here on sure. Windows, though, because, and a lot, a little bit to do with kind of the warranties, because a lot of pieces of at least, uh, it, it seems like a lot of, parts to anything, like a, whether it's a window or the cranks or all these different pieces, they can all kind of start to fail at the same time. Do you see that often? Yeah, especially, uh, I mean, wood, uh, windows, just as a general rule, they say have a life expectancy of about 25 years. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times when I buy things, I'm thinking, well, that's the last time I'm going to have to buy that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, 10 or 15 year, years later, it's starting to go bad. And it's like, well, 
yeah, you know, what's up with this? Sure. And then you kind of look into it, and I guess they are supposed to wear out after a while. Yeah. <laughs> so what else is happening, uh, I guess, in the world of homes when you start looking at this time of year that people can keep an eye out for? Well, uh, one of the best things to do this time of year, and I typically like to do it kind of end of August, September. Of course, we've got real good weather coming this week, although it doesn't look like it uh, right at this particular week in terms of the mornings. But afternoons have sure been beautiful like it is right now. Um the is caulking okay we've just we've got lots of loss of warm air getting out of our house okay mm-hmm. and so caulking around windows um, a lot of times people don't think about the areas that they lose probably the most heat because heat rises is out around their light fixtures and speakers and those kinds of things that are up in the ceiling okay we lose a lot of hot air up in there Jim Estrada joins me, owner and lead inspector for property inspector LLC Jim uh, so are people how many I mean when are you inspecting homes, and this is something that you're seeing, or is are I mean, are you advising to this for a lot of people who maybe are losing the heat? Uh, consistently, I mean, caulking is an issue around the home, everywhere from bathrooms, around showers and sinks and stuff, uh, to the exterior of the home. So, I mean, I'm looking for those things all the time. Do I put them in my report? Yeah, I put them in uh, kind of a project routine maintenance area because it's not like earth shattering whether it gets fixed today or not, mm-hmm. but it is something that needs to be maintained on a regular basis. Okay, and there's just like changing the oil in your car. Okay, I mean, there's things that have to be done if you want your house to be maintained. Yeah, I mean, I've never thought about resealing things in my house. <laughs> maybe I should. Maybe I need to maybe, come over and do an inspection at your show place. Show me what needs, to, yeah, what needs to be sealed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anything else, Jim, that really jumps out at you this time of year, especially, well, just, you know? You know, just talking about the caulking and stuff, uh, there are three real good types of caulking. Latex caulking, which uh, most people like to use because it's really, really easy to clean up. The problem is it doesn't have a lot of flexibility, so it will tend to need to be replaced on a pretty regular basis. Um, the more expensive caulking, the butyl rubber type caulking is actually the best, but it's also the hardest to clean up, and it, it'll it make a mess, and if you're not good with it, don't bother. Uh, silicone caulking um, is kind of probably the best favorite for most things because it's kind of the in-between, but you do need to make sure that you prep your area before you put your caulking on. And is this something that people need to, I mean, is this something people can do on their own? It all depends. Yeah. Me, I can't. Really? <laughs> I just don't have the You're like Mr. Uh, you're you like know, Mr. It's, Fix-It it's Man. It's just crazy, you know? It's just like I, I, I don't have the patience for it. If you want me to move a wall, replumb, rewire, boy, I can get that done so fast. But when it comes to painting, I end up wearing half of the paint. The caulking I end up with on, on all of my fingers and stuff. So I just hire somebody the to details. do that that's really good at it. And they come in and they just take the time and boom, it's done. It looks beautiful. And <laughs> funny, the things I think you'd be so good at, Jim, and then quickly I learned that it's the, the little thing. But I things. can point it out. You can point it out. Like, look, <laughs> that is not working. 